అందరికీ నమస్కారం Good evening, all. Good evening, Dr. Nanda. Can you say good evening? Subhrit Sahib, good evening. Good evening, Dr. Nanda. Namaste, namaste. Namaste, namaste. Namaste, namaste. Namaste, namaste. నమస్తే ఐఎస్ఎన్ రాజ్ గారు నర్మదా మేడం ఐఎస్ఎన్ సత్యనారాయణ రాజ్ గారు రామిరెడ్డి గారు అందరికి నమస్కారం నమస్తే సార్ నమస్తే అందరూ రావు ఫోన్ చేస్తాం ఆనంద్ సాబ్ ప్రణాం ఆనంద్ జీ ప్రణాం సార్ ఆనంద్ సాబ్ ప్రొఫెసర్ రమణ నాయక్ గుడ్ ఈవెనింగ్ నమస్తే సార్ హలో గుడ్ ఈవెనింగ్ టు ఆల్ ఆఫ్ యు గుడ్ ఈవెనింగ్ గుడ్ ఆఫ్టర్నూన్ గుడ్ ఈవెనింగ్ అవర్ సార్ ప్రొఫెసర్ రమణ 
ఫైన్ హౌ ఆర్ యూ వేర్ ఆర్ యూ ఫైన్ సార్ ఫైన్ సార్ మీ ఇమేజ్ రావటం లేదు అవును సార్ వాయిస్ తక్కువ వస్తుంది సార్ ఇంకో నాదా మీదా వాయిస్ వేర్ లో సార్ నా వాయిస్ ఆ మీ ఇమేజ్ రావటం లేదు సార్ మీ ఇమేజ్ రావటం లేదు అన్నాను yes sir yes sir సుబ్రీడి గారు బాగున్నారా మీ వాయిస్ రావటం లేదండి సుబ్రీడి అన్మ్యూట్ చేయండి ఓకేనా నౌ నౌ ఇట్ ఇస్ ఓకే గుడ్ ఆ నమస్కారం సార్ నమస్తే బ్రహ్మారెడ్డి గారు గుడ్ ఈవెనింగ్ రమేష్ కుమార్ గారు నమస్తే నమస్తే నాయ్ గారు రైట్ రమేష్ సార్ రైట్ నమస్తే నే నమస్తే వాల్ రామరెడ్డి గారు నమస్తే నాకే నాకెందుకు మిస్ అయింది ఎప్పుడు చూస్తాను ఇప్పుడు ఇప్పుడు ఓకే వచ్చిందండి నేను జాయిన్ అయ్యాను నమస్కారం అండి తెలంగాణ స్టేట్ సెంటర్ ఇన్స్టిట్యూషన్ ఆఫ్ సెలబ్రేటింగ్ టూ హండ్రెడ్ ట్వంటీ ఫస్ట్ బర్త్డే సెలబ్రేషన్ ఆఫ్ జనరల్ సార్ అర్దర్ థామస్ కాటన్ and the topic relevance of sir arthur cotton work for sustainable water to be addressed by the respected eminent speaker engineer g kondal rao garu mie chief engineer public health and municipal engineering department government of telangana dr g venkat subbaya fie honorary secretary institution of engineer telangana state center engineer t venkatesham తెలంగాణ స్టేట్ సెంటర్ అండ్ కన్వీనర్ ఆఫ్ టుడేస్ ఈవెంట్ గారు ప్రొఫెసర్ రామానుజాచార్యులు గారు నర్మదా మేడం డాక్టర్ ఐఎస్ఎన్ రాజ్ గారు అండ్ ఫాస్ట్ ప్రెసిడెంట్ కౌన్సిల్ మెంబర్స్ ఆఫ్ ఇన్స్టిట్యూషన్ ఆఫ్ బిజినెస్ ఇండియా ఫాస్ట్ చైర్మన్ ఫాస్ట్ ఆనరీ సెక్రటరీస్ మెంబర్స్ ఆఫ్ తెలంగాణ స్టేట్ సెంటర్ కమిటీ కార్పొరేట్ మెంబర్స్ ఆఫ్ ఇన్స్టిట్యూషన్ ఆఫ్ బిజినెస్ తెలంగాణ స్టేట్ సెంటర్ డిస్టింగ్విష్డ్ గెస్ట్ ladies and gentlemen good evening once again to all the honorable 
participants in this virtual today i feel it is a great privilege and honor to be amid this august gathering and extend a warm and hearty welcome to the eminent speaker and all of you to this 221st birthday celebrations of general sir arthur thomas cotton a few minutes back myself along with the k subhrati garu and other staff members and other corporate members who were ei paid floral tributes to the sir arthur thomas cotton with the garlanding and same is also put to the screen and i would like to inform the elite audience he has been named sir arthur cotton as the emperor of global welfare sir arthur cotton was born to mrs and mr henry colberry cotton woodcote village near oxford he was graduated in engineering at an early age of 18 years and joined the east india company he was sent to south india to take up the irrigation works people in the region of godavari river were worship sir arthur cotton as english god the waters of godavari are identified with the name of sir arthur cotton who lives in millions of hearts for eternity as long as the sound of the ripples of godavari exist having come from the distant con country on occupation to this place sir arthur cotton attained a permanent place in the hearts of the people of godavari districts he was the architect of making andhra pradesh a rice bowl and here stands the godavari anikat a living memorial for this great man who provided a living means to millions of people the credit of converting the barren lands into green fields by diverting godavari waters cotton took up the gigantic program of developing irrigation in south india in the year 1829 in the year 1836 the kolavaram and anikat in tanjore district built by him brought enormous gains he had to press for release of funds for this purpose from east india company explaining the importance of people's welfare and the fruits of investment made on irrigation works whose views were endorsed by mr henry montgomery the then district collector of tanjore later the governor of madras province and entrusted the responsibility of irrigation development in godavari area to sir arthur cotton after detailed study on river gauging flow characteristics counter sub command area and other geographical features submitted a report in the year 1845 there were great famines during 1791 to 1833 in godavari districts at a time when these famines were became nightmare to the people sir arthur cotton landed as their an incarnation of bagiratha a mythological idol who is said to have brought heavenly waters onto the earth in 1844 after conducting a recognition he swung into action having received the government approval the foundation foundation stone was laid in 1844 overcoming a number of adults sir arthur cotton completed the construction of the anikat successfully in the year 1852 it was on the recommendation of this great engineer anikats and ganga krishna and tungabhadra were conceptualized sir arthur cotton was knighted in 1861 and was awarded kcsc in 1866 in recognition of his invaluable contributions made in making use of the river what as through his well conceived and popular designs he was an eloquent speaker in south indian languages and hindustani and won the hearts of all people the emperor of global welfare has clear comprehension on the suffering the woes of the poor and downtrodden particularly the agriculture community and struggled endlessly throughout his life for the welfare of the those who have not 
Her other pattern never followed the path of routine manner in constructing honeycuts. He did it differently, weighing the time and cost on one side and the benefits and returns on the other. The young engineers of today shall emulate his spirit of devotion, acumen in the profession, and service to the nation, which alone could be a greater tribute paid to the, this great man. Today, I am very happy to be associated with this memorable event. And I am glad to inform the, the Telangana Center formed on 28th August 2016 and has more than 10,000 carpet models on its roads and it is one of the most recent of ship in Syria, which is engaged successfully in translating the objectives and mission of the institution of business India into practice and has backed best state center awards for three consecutive years, 2021, 20, 21, 22, 2019 and 20, the Telangana State Center has been playing very important role formation on engineering and contemporary technology, bringing industry, academia, experts and professionals together on the same platform. On behalf of the Telangana State Center of the Institution of Engineers and on, own my, on my own behalf, I once again extend a heart welcome to the eminent speaker, Engineer G. Kondal Rao Garu. Chief. Okay. Chief Engineer, Public Health and Municipal Car Engineering Department, and all of you to this important event. Before I request the eminent speaker, Engineer G. Kondal Rao Garu, to deliver the, the today's talk, I request you. Engineer B. Prashant, AMIE member of the Executive Committee of Telangana State Center to kindly introduce the eminent speaker, Engineer J. Kondal Rao Garu to the allied audience. Thanks one and all. And over to Engineer B. Prashant. Good evening one and all. Uh, it's a kind honor uh, to... Prashant. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Can, I, can you hear me? Yes. Hello? Yes. Can you hear me, sir? Yeah, it is audible. Okay, okay, fine. Man. Uh, good evening, one and all. Uh, it's my kind privilege to introduce today's chief guest uh, and speaker, uh, G. Kondal. Unmute K and D. Prashant. Sir. Sir. Prashant. Unmute, sir. Sir, you know, sir. Ah, I am continuing to read. Can any, okay, okay. okay. Um, uh, Kondal Rao Garu, born on 27 12, 1957 in Kumam, Prakasham. Uh, Prakasham. District Andhra Pradesh obtained his B.Tech Civil from JNTU Kakinada, ME Structural Engineering from Usman University, PG Diploma in Energy Management and PG Diploma in Environment Management. Uh, from University of Hyderabad. He is a member of Institution of Engineers India, Indian Water Works Association and Chartered Engineer. He worked in Irrigation Department of Government of Andhra Pradesh for eight years as Assistant Executive Engineer. He was selected as Deputy Executive Engineer in Public Health and Municipal Engineering Department AP and worked for 30 years and retired as Chief Engineer in 2017 and later been offering his services as a freelancer. As Chief Engineer, Vijayawada Municipal Corporation, he was instrumental in commissioning water and wastewater treatment plants initiating energy efficiency measures and waste water safety plan and in improving operations and maintenance of water and sanitation facilities. He also contributed to engineering reforms like energy studies, water and sanitation studies under AP urban services for the poor and in Madhya Pradesh urban services for the poor, both DFID UK projects. He also worked closely with poor communities in mission for elimination of poverty in municipal areas, MEPMA, Andhra Pradesh. It, as Chief Engineer in Public Health and Municipal Engineering Department, he was instrumental in procurement of water and sanitation projects under Amrut program and monitored Smart Cities mission. Both Government of India projects in AP and Telangana 
He was also involved in formulation of strategies for urban mission and infrastructure development in AP. He has also four, published four papers in national and international general conferences. He is presently a freelancer and guest faculty engineering staff college of India, AP Human, Rose, Human Resource Development Institute, Bapatla, and in few engineering colleges. He is passionately associated with NGOs working on sustainable development goals and United Nations like those related to health, education, clean water and sanitation and climate action. His hobbies are yoga and singing and poetry. Hello. Th thank you, Prashant Garu, for the kind introduction. Uh, thank you, Brahma and Reddy, uh, Brahma, Brahma Reddy Garu, for the <coughs> introduction on uh, Sir Arthur Kartamji and uh, uh, detailed explanation of uh, his uh, uh, great works and other things. So, you have made my job uh, easier. So, I will uh, dwell more on the subject uh, because already <coughs> you have introduced Sir Arthur Cotton to him to the uh, audience, uh, respectable audience. So I welcome all the brothers and sisters for this uh, uh, presentation on relevance of Sir Arthur Cotton to sustainable water management. It's a great honor for me to be uh, with you on this week. Uh, I'll be covering his uh, legacy in brief, the SDGs and status of water and sanitation, smart water management, water safety plan, and the purpose of life, etc. So, uh, uh, so John Henry Morris, uh, uh, who has uh, uh, who has had extensive intimacy with uh, uh, Sir Arthur Cotton, has told the Godavari Anikati is perhaps the noblest feat of engineering skill which has yet been accomplished in British. The great uh, uh, men, uh, thing. So sustainable development goals are thirty seventeen in number uh, adopted by about 197 countries uh, in the year 2015 to be achieved by the year 2030, among which uh, we have a goal number six, uh, directly related to clean water and sanitation, related to uh, climate action. And uh, the goals are intimately connected with each other, impinging on each other. So we can't say this goal is only uh, achieving a um, uh, internet to achieve only this purpose. It has got a multifarious uh, impact also. So, so uh, go, yes, SDG 6, the Sustainable Development Goal 6, uh, uh, enjoying the equitable water supply and universal water supply and affordable water supply to all drinking water by 2030 and safe sanitation, equitable sanitation and affordable sanitation and also hygiene uh, to all the people. Uh, and to end open defecation, particularly with uh, uh, special focus on women and girls who are in vulnerable situation. And uh, to uh, reduce the uh, pollution by eliminating dumping and minimizing the release of hazardous chemicals and materials by having the proportion of untreated wastewater and substantially increasing, uh, increasing the recycling and reuse, just like our uh, circular economy, the goal of circular economy. So this is the, these are the specific targets under climate action, strength and resilience and adaptive capacity, and to integrate the climate change measures into national policies, whether it relates to irrigation or water supply or whatever it may be, and to improve the education and awareness raising among all relating to the uh, goal of climate action, and also to implement the commitment undertaken by developed countries to the uh, UN uh, Framework Convention on Climate Change, to mobilize 100 billion dollars annually by 2020 and also to promote in the capacity of uh, for effective climate change related planning and management in these developed countries and small island nations so this is the science, uh, sustainable development uh, the gist of the sustainable development goals so we should preserve the, preserve the environment and whatever development will take up the environment should be able to bear that development without being unduly impacted by the development process. And also the economy should be, the social, socially it should be equitable and economically viable. For whatever development we take up, it should be economically viable and socially equitable also, uh, apart from preserving the environment and protecting uh, This is the whole uh, I mean, framework of sustainable development. So water security is to sustainable development, what water is to life, like water is to life, water is the uh, basis of life. Similar 
Thirdly, water security is the basis to sustainable development. For us. Um, recently, we have said uh, the plumb, the 2023 uh, World Water Day, in which the accelerating change is the ma uh, main objective, which means uh, to draw ex everyone's attention to the importance of fresh water and to advocate for the sustainable management of fresh water resources, particularly uh, creating the uh, awareness and spreading the knowledge about uh, the climate change impacts on water uh, and wastewater and other uh, water uses. So as already uh, our uh, esteemed uh, uh, members will be knowing, almost 54% of India faces high to extremely high water stress. So as per the Falkal Mark, indicator, Falkal Mark indicators, uh, uh, the uh, about 17, 1700 cubic meters per annum of water is required for the for water to be sust mean sufficient for for each uh, each person. So against that, uh, we, uh, our uh, per capita availability of water has been drilled down to about 1200 uh, cubic meters per capita per annum. So and uh, almost uh, Indians are already facing. Uh, extreme water stress. So this water stress is exacerbating the uh, water quality issues also. That is the problem, unfortunately. And almost 85.3% of water uh, is being used for irrigation, not only the surface water, but groundwater also. And about 6.6% .6 for domestic purposes and uh, about 2% or so for industry and for other purposes, 6.5%. So more than 100 million people live in areas with uh, poor water quality. And the supply is likely to fall 50 percent of the demand by and percent of the Almost about uh, uh, in city has uh, indicated out of about uh, six uh, uh, rivers, uh, almost 425 rivers are uh, highly polluted, uh, contaminated, like Shipra, like uh, Yamuna, like our Mosi, unfortunately. And India is ranked about 120 out of 122 on the water quality index. So on 31, 2023, out of 19.36 crore rural households in India, about 11 crore households have uh, been uh, given tap water supply in their homes under the Janjeevan mission, under the rural program. Even uh, the Amrut program is also being undertaken in the urban areas. So, uh, Great honor for me to be uh, mean, uh, talking about the uh, great legend who, although he belongs to uh, me, the um, uh, Great Britain, he was like an Indian because he was very empathetic to Indians and he did a lot of with heart and soul for the benefit of India and the Indians. So that's the grace and he was assistant. Although the British government uh, put some roadblocks uh, and did not sanction his proposals uh, um, um, early, but he was very persistent and he uh, cleared all their doubts and ensured that uh, whatever projects he has proposed, like the Godavari and uh, like, the, like the Krishna, etc., and, and even Kaveri, etc., uh, and ensured that they, uh, they have been sanctioned and they have been executed. He has actually executed them as, uh, as an engineer, as a um, almost a statesman like him. So he was born as uh, our uh, Brahma Reddy Garu has already mentioned. So he was born on uh, 15th, 1803 in UK and he died on 24th July 1899. And he was commissioned first as second lieutenant in Madras Engineers uh, Group. And he was first appointed as assistant engineer in Madras Bank Department. And he conducted survey of Pamban Channel between India and Ceylon. And he was in charge of investigation for the Kaveri scheme. And also he worked on removing silt in Kalanai Dam. And he built upper dam in Kaveri. And he constructed the lower and uh, in Nikarai. So based on the uh, his, uh, his, uh, his experiences uh, in Kalanai Dam, he has uh, analyzed the uh, its uh, problems uh, the uh, he has encountered on the found uh, uh, while executing its foundations, and uh, he has learned a lot of things. Uh, the, his group has learned a lot of things on foundations in Sandbay. And he has also constructed the Godavari Anikat from 1847 to 52 against great odds and great uh, obstacles powered by the uh, then British government. And he has also constructed the Krishna Anikat from 51 to 55 and the KC Canal also. And he has also prepared the plans for Vishakhapatnam port. In 58, in 1858, he has proposed connecting all Indian major rivers 
and interlinking of rivers almost 120 years from now uh, before before his death. So that was great greatness and foresight and vision. So that is the main, that is what is expected of us as engineers. And he also suggested drought relief measures for Odisha. And he also devoted, uh, devoted his life to the construction of irrigation and navigation canals throughout British India. So as um, due to his great achievements and his passion for uh, serving the people of India, he was much revered figure in Andhra Pradesh for his contribution irrigating the Konasima area, that is what is called the East Godavari uh, area. And Patna was hit by as already um, mentioned, by administrative superiors uh, due to his commitment to Indian people and uh, his uh, and for his uh, will to serve and uh, his passion to serve the Indian people, uh, as he has uh, I mean, experienced uh, the sufferings of the people uh, by, by his heart, although not physically. And uh, because people were suffering from drought and floods at the same time uh, in those areas, and uh, they were really uh, in a very, poor, very, very bad condition. The riots, the farmers, and the uh, normal people also. So going through famine and cyclone really ravaged districts. He was distressed by the sight of famished people, as we have mentioned, and his career was exemplary, and he was persistent in his efforts to. Get the sanction. I mean, work sanction or the great project sanction, and execute, and he has executed success, successfully uh, without any uh, I mean uh, gap. So this is the greatness. Uh, this is the Sarathar Cut badge recently constructed uh, by the uh, Andhra Pradesh government. Uh, he actually, and uh, um, he was actually uh, considered as. The Dreisberg, I mean, Delta architect, that is Delta Shilpi uh, of uh, Andhra Pradesh, and uh, Cotton Dura, he is uh, fondly uh, and uh, with love he was called. And in honor of him, a um, memory, I mean, a museum was uh, uh, created in Rajamandri. This is the Grand Anicat constructed by him in Kalana in Tamil Nadu. So, one, uh, I think it is better to, I mean, it is appropriate to. Uh, recognize or I mean uh, uh, remember the great services rendered by uh, engineer Vanam Viraya, the sub-engineer who was associated with uh, uh, Sir Arthur Cotton and uh, did immense service and uh, um, assist uh, to him uh, during the uh, survey uh, and also during the implementation of the projects. So Rao, Rao Bahadur Vanam Viraya, he was the sub-engineer who had provided immense assistance and support to the other court. Really, uh, my uh, respectable salutes to the other court and to Vanam Viraigaru. So, uh, in this context, uh, I think it may be appropriate to uh, mean, uh, uh, discuss about the dam safety issues, the Dam Safety Act of 2021, on which uh, uh, Dr. Ayasen Rajagaru also has given a number of uh, lectures, uh, both in, uh, in Institute of Engineers and also in ISKI also. Uh, in India, there are 5,334 dams with 447 of them being particularly significant. So recently, um, uh, there is a record that uh, about uh, 36 dams uh, or structures have been uh, affected or failed due to whatever reasons. Uh, that is the unfortunate thing. Uh, so the objective of this Dam Safety Act is to provide for the surveillance, inspection, and operation maintenance of the dam for prevention of dam failure-related disasters. And, uh, to evolve an institutional mechanism to ensure their safe function and matters connected with the, uh, their with or incidental there too. That is the objective of the uh, Dam Safety Act. So there, it has been, there have been prescribed for the central government as well as the state government with a particular focus on the state government uh, functionaries uh, for uh, uh, institutional functionaries also to report to the government of India or to transfer the data online to get action at, uh, at the right time and also to get some assistance and uh, advisory from the government of India. So this is a very important uh, step taken by the government of India. Although there are some issues regarding uh, um, encroachment of interstate uh, territory, maybe per perhaps to some extent it may be necessary because uh, we should have a uniform procedure uh, across the uh, I mean, country. So let's see how it works. So dam safety is important for safeguarding the water security 
and the huge in infrastructure or dam dams etc projects uh, which have been made by the uh, government of india as well as the government of uh, the states and also to uh, safeguard the human life and properties of the people and also the uh, there is a necessity for upgrade, upgrade, updating the dam safety manual from time to time also training the young engineers in transfer of knowledge and skill we have got excellent eminent engineers in irrigation department who have got extensive knowledge and experience uh, uh, down, down to earth experience on these uh, dam safety and uh, it is imperative that uh, the uh, their knowledge and uh, their skills and their experiences should be transferred to the uh, young engineers which is of immense uh, value to them and also to the state and the nation so recent dam failures uh, uh, which are notable pincha project uh, ringband uh, and uh, karina project in kadapa district and uh, tiwari dam in ratagiri district of maharashtra and purichintala dam gate disaster these are some of the very few of the uh, recent dam failures which i am referring to so what is a human right so in uh, united nation general assembly resolution 64 by 292 has declared that water and sanitation as a human right but um, my take will be is it not the right of every living being for that matter because not only human beings drink water and use water for other purposes but other living beings also drink water and use them for uh, their uh, daily purposes so while planning we should all plan for them. like our irrigation engineers they used to plan for fish and also for cattle that's very important even for water supply etc we plan so water for all that is the a slogan leave no no one behind that is the slogan world water day 2019 which is a very I mean uh, very appropriate slogan so these are the sustainable development goal number 6 uh, which uh, says uh, nearly 18% of the um, india has got about 18% of the world population and 4% of the world's water resources and 330 million people are affected by drought in india over 50% of the rural households defecate in the open of course after the uh, swachh bharat mission that uh, that number would have drastically and uh, almost uh, one of the child child deaths are taking this uh, in in world in um, one fifth of the child deaths in the world are in india due to severe diarrhea that is the unfortunate thing we are uh, of course no doubt um, progressing in the in that area absolutely no doubt but there is a lot to be achieved because we are, even sri lanka is better than us in, in this respect only kerala is competing with sri lanka in our in our country and uh, about in 2015 110000 uh, people have died the children have died due to severe diarrhea so even now 2.6 billion people uh, don't have access to safe drinking water and 663 million people uh, don't have access to uh, safe sanitation so this is the clean drinking water uh, goal and the connected uh, I mean the uh, the uh, tar gets universal universal water supply and universal sanitation and better drinking water quality more efficient water use and integrated water of water management and healthier uh, ecosystems and international cooperation and more local participation this local participation is one of the most important things which we have learnt in our mepma mission of poverty in municipal areas so what are the challenges of climate change extreme weather events extreme and untimely and unseasonal precipitation heavy precipitation and flash floods and extreme floods and change of river courses and extremely uh, low flows in lean periods projects by upper riparian states which will be endangering the uh, affecting the uh, lower riparian states in an adverse manner and operation charge to climate change dam safety to climate so the, in that way climate change is very very pertinent and uh, relevant uh, uh, dam safety issues or irrigation engineering so as uh, as we all know salt water constitutes 97% of the uh, main uh, the total water and fresh water only constitutes 2.5% and even the only th only 0.3% is the uh, actual water which is available for drinking water drinking and other purposes fresh water this is the falcon mark water stress indicator 
so as already um, discussed so we are already about uh, 1200 uh, square um, 1200 cubic meters per capita per annum india already in, in a water stressed state and uh, unless we take uh, appropriate actions and uh, improve our water use efficiency and irrigation efficiencies and other uh, use efficiencies uh, we will land in uh, very much trouble uh, you know by the year 2000, uh, 2030 is a very i mean uh, a signal for us and uh, india is also in already uh, water withdrawals uh, are over 40 percent water withdrawals uh, as percentage of total available water we are already i mean uh, withdrawing more than 40 percent of the water and water stress also uh, very high water stress in our country as already discussed this is the rainfall so the number of uh, rainfall uh, um, uh, rainfall uh, rainfall days uh, has also uh, re reduced and the um, severity of uh, rainfall precipitation has also uh, increased uh, substantially as we are experiencing in telangana and andhra pradesh and in other states uh, states also in our country and heat waves heat waves are increasing in the impact of climate change and water resources so india is all already so more than 50% of india is already uh, stressed uh, the uh, the water so water sources are stressed in our country and uh, it is pertinent to note that every one degree of with every one degree of warming another 7% of the population experiences a 20% decline in water availability today already 30 to 40% are exposed to water shortages and also population is exposed to 100 year flood triples from low to high emission scenarios so that is the i mean danger we are in unless we uh, take care of the uh, climate changes so ua is investing heavily in desalination and uh, wastewater treatment plants because it lacks uh, fresh water so that's why they have uh, town prince also, also admitted for us water is more important than oil oil so tomorrow's water or water uh, wars are fought uh, will be fought uh, more on water than for other purposes so that is the uh, reality yeah, already uh, inter interbasin transfers and interstate uh, river water disputes are already there uh, among uh, different different states in uh, uh, in our country so uh, that is the reality and that will become a reality across the nations also so the left uh, on the in the figure the left side uh, indicates uh, the nature's uh, natural uh, greenhouse effect uh, where more heat escapes into the space whereas uh, due to human induced uh, greenhouse uh, effect uh, less of heat expo ex escapes into a space that's why human induced climate change is more prevalent and more effective or uh, has more impact on the human beings and other living beings than the natural, uh, naturally occurring uh, greenhouse gas effect. So what are the causes of climate change? Anthropogenic due to human induced and natural. So human being is polluting uh, or creating the climate change due to his uh, effects, due to his actions, like uh, uh, chemical fertilizers and pesticides, which are being released into the air as well as into the uh, environment into the water water bodies and also deforestation on a large scale even amazon uh, rainforests are also not well left they are also being depl depleted even in our in our own state also different uh, forests are also being depleted at a very fast rate due to developmental activities um, unmindful of the environmental consequences and increase uh, use of vehicles personal uses uh, use of vehicles and also emissions of uh, greenhouse gases into the env environment uh, from human uses as well as vehicles uh, and also industries traffic etc and also industries and emission of carbon dioxide so these are the anthropogenic that is human induced natural sunspots and solar cycles are also one cause and ocean currents forest fires volcanic eruptions and meteorites these are all causes and the methane emissions from animals are also a cause yeah, from the anthropogenic side uh, even our uh, rice and wheat etc also emit uh, uh, the greenhouse gases into the environment and the animals also. And global warming and climate change. Global warming is just one aspect of climate change and it refers to the rise in uh, global temperatures due to mainly to the uh, increasing concentration of greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. 
like your um, carbon dioxide and uh, the methane, nitrous oxide, uh, ozone, etc. And the climate change refers to the increasing changes in the measures of climate over a long period. It may be natural or it may be anthropogenic. So these are the climate changes, uh, you know, the impacts of climate change. Uh, the migration of uh, and life cycles also will be affected. Life cycles of uh, various animals and also plants also. And snow and ice, uh, less, less of snow and ice. And higher temperatures, uh, sea surface temperatures, as well as uh, atmospheric temperatures. And more heat waves. The, uh, for the last 15 years, more than about 10 years, uh, we have got very high uh, heat, uh, heat wave effect. And more droughts and wildfires and you know, uh, uh, thawing thermofrost and changes in plant life cycles, as we discussed, and warmer oceans and uh, rising sea levels and damaged coral reefs. The Great Barrier uh, Reef in Australia is an example where the human-induced climate change has impacted the um, quality of the leaves, uh, I mean, uh, the coral reefs, and also the quantity in terms of uh, quantity also, and uh, stronger storms, and changing rain pattern, and changing snow pattern. It is very, very visible for us physically also. So the coral reefs, how they are uh, affecting, the, uh, uh, how they are being affected by the climate change. So these are the impacts of climate change, which we have already discussed all these things. Climate change impacts on water. What are they? So climate change is also putting extra pressure and adversely affecting the global water cycle. And it is leading to irregular precipitation, more floods and more droughts, and seasonal, unseasonal precipitation. So like what we are seeing now, uh, during the May, April and May, we have got so much of uh, precipitation uh, extreme weather, like uh, equaling best extreme weather events, which has devastated the uh, main uh, crops uh, in uh, Telangana and Andhra Pradesh. It is also creating an imbalance between water supply and demand, supply and demand. The availability of safe water is a major global concern due to the rapidly increasing population, urbanization, and unsustainable uh, climate uh, consumption patterns, not only of water, but also of other goods. Our consumerism is really destroying the environment. Because uh, each, every, uh, I mean, uh, every uh, uh, vastu, what, what means uh, any, every article has got uh, uh, embodied water and an embodied energy. If we, uh, if we unduly or irresponsibly use or purchase any, any, act, uh, any article, it, it naturally involves uh, spending of a lot of water and a lot of energy. So we should be very, very I mean, uh, careful. So climate change impacts on water. Reduced access to fresh water, it is posing to a threat to global food security. So naturally, water is critical to food, uh, production of food, and livelihood security also. And also causing a large-scale migration of people across the country, I mean, across the countries, as well as within the country also. And uh, due to this one, uh, strategies for water conservation and wastewater reuse and recycling also should be adopted in order to lessen or reduce the gap between the supply and demand for water for different activities. So the world is approaching, already the world has approached the, the 1.1 degrees centigrade about the pre-industrial levels, uh, the temperature, regarding temperature for the first time. Pre-industrial refers to the average global temperature between 1850 to 1900 years, which were 0.8 degrees centigrade cooler than in 2014 or 13.8 degrees centigrade. So the IPCC report says the biggest risk uh, is the climate change due to increasing global uh, average surface temperatures by 1.1 degrees to 6.4 degrees by 2100. Global mean sea level is projected to increase by uh, between 0.18 to 0.59 uh, meters. So the surface flows in Krishna, Penna, Kaveri, Luni, Tapati, Narmada, Mahi, and Sabarmati will decline by 2050. This is the projection. And this will have implications for droughts and scarcity of available water resources. And surface flow in Himalayan rivers is projected to increase due to climate change resulting in floods in this, in this region. So the, the greatest danger for our uh, food security and our water security is uh, uh, if there is uh, uh, either whether it is excessive rainfall, whether it is less rainfall, least rainfall in the upper reaches will be affected. The lower riparian rates of um, states of uh, Andhra Pradesh and uh, Telangana will be affected. So that is the, that is where we have to be uh, very alert uh, in uh, policy making as well as uh, uh, in our uh, um, operational schemes or whatever it may be.
So increased frequency of heat waves is also a matter of concern. Thousands of people are dying uh, uh, due to heat waves for which we have to evolve policies for protecting their uh, them and for protecting their livelihoods and uh, their uh, lives also. So even um, similarly, uh, is the, similar is the case with floods and droughts and other extreme weather events. So, so another thing is, uh, unless there is industry, academia, inter interaction uh, and transfer of knowledge from the industry, from the academic community uh, to the uh, students and other, uh, from the academic community to the industry, and to the uh, and from the industry to the uh, academic community and the students also uh, the transfer of knowledge will not take place experiences will not take place take place and uh, it's a great loss to the next generation so we have to prepare the gen next generation for addressing the climate change impacts so that is our challenge similarly GH is, uh, ghg release, uh, releases due to buildings like our uh, we are having our uh, green buildings so a lot of work is being uh, being done in green buildings like our, uh, I mean, uh, the uh, Fiki building or uh, the CIA building, green building. Uh, like a lot of uh, work has to be done in green buildings and their certification and uh, in their adoption by the common people also, for which a lot of, uh, I mean, uh, a lot of incentives uh, and uh, support should, uh, needs to be given by the policy makers and the regulators, uh, like our uh, GHMC or the Municipal Administration Urban Development Department like that or even the Panchayat Raj Department. Similarly, the challenge, sanitation challenge due to climate change. Because climate change is having its uh, great impact on the water supplies uh, in terms of floods and droughts, uh, and also uh, regarding the quality, uh, it is important to uh, address the sanitation issue from a different perspective than we have been doing now, because uh, our resources are very limited. And we have to go for nature-based solutions and nature-friendly solutions. Uh, like our uh, ex Dharma Rao Garu, who is a retired chief engineer, and our uh, ISN Raju Garu, who are also involved. So uh, we have to go for uh, nature-friendly solutions like our uh, constructed wetlands or chemists, uh, uh, like uh, soil biotechnology, like that, where uh, we use less water and uh, we use the uh, other uh, channels of uh, treating the uh, influent and getting a comparable effluent in line with the CPCB norms. Similarly to the technology, there's a lot of challenges in, in, in respect of technologies. There are technologies which are more costly as well as they are cheap. So we have to go because of our resources are very limited. The municipal resources, the government resources are the gram panchayat resources are very, very limited in our country. And we are really struggling even for, uh, for uh, funds for operation maintenance. We have to go for nature friendly, because low, 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 uh, low OM technologies, low energy consuming uh, technologies. And also AI, uh, the artificial intelligence is also posing challenges now uh, when artificial intelligence uh, based uh, uh, tools are used in our uh, regulatory uh, issues uh, like our control systems, etc. We have to be very, very careful because AI is a boon as well as a pain unless we use it, uh, uh, unless we control the uh, artificial intelligence. So the imperative need for us uh, for transfer of skills and uh, main knowledge, that is what we have already discussed. So water audit is also very important in respect of irrigation as well as in respect of water and water supply. Uh, that is also a very relevant and very timely, um, this thing. Uh, uh, similarly, energy audit also. We have to go for uh, every three years, uh, uh, mandatory uh, energy audit and also water audit for uh, conserving water. So the environment and social and uh, human challenges of interbasin transfers. So uh, there is a lot of talk about interbasin transfers. But what are the environmental impacts of these interbasin transfers? What are the human issues like uh, rehabilitation, resettlement issues of, which are posing uh, a great uh, challenge to the um, policy makers and also for our uh, implementers like us? And also uh, the um, energy, the energy which is required and the huge um, in energy in terms of uh, thousands of uh, thousands or even lakhs of uh, megawatts of energy which are required for these interbasin transfers. Uh, the minimum uh, um, ecological flow issues, that is 10% of ecological flows. These are all issues uh, or challenges uh, connected with the interbasin transfers. Although we need not be very pessimistic, but we should be very, very cautious. That's what uh, I want to I mean, uh, highlight. 
So integrated water, water sector approach. So uh, regarding irrigation as well as water supply and also uh, sanitation issues, we have to go for an integrated water sector approach, uh, considering all the options, technical options available, and uh, the watershed management. And we have to plan uh, concurrently within the available resources, which which have to result, which have to result in maximum health benefit to our citizens. Health, not only health, it is a matter of livelihood also because uh, everything uh, impinges on the livelihood issues. Whether it is a regular employment or a I mean or a employment self-employment or whatever it may be, for small employment or whatever it may be, micro micro enterprises. Water supply is the first priority. Sanitation is the second priority, and stormwater drainage is the third priority. <clears throat> of course, irrigation comes on the top of it. Uh, next, drinking water. I mean, next, uh, uh, I mean, industry drinking water like that. But uh, my personal view is that after irrigation, uh, we should get drinking water as the uh, next priority. And then, uh, I mean, uh, industry, of course, it may differ uh, the pers based on the perspective. What is scarcer, what is stress towns? We have to identify those things and we have to plan accordingly uh, the water and sanitation infrastructure for them, as well as drainage and uh, flooding also. So community involvement, this is the most important thing which we have learned uh, during our stint in uh, the Andhra Urban Services for the Poor and Madhya Pradesh Urban Services for the Poor. Both are uk aided projects. Uh, this is where uh, we have to, unless we involve the people in the planning stage itself, uh, we will not get the uh, result right. And even the operational maintenance also cannot be done in a successful manner, in a, in a uh, seamless manner. That is a very important thing. Community involvement very is a very important thing. Risks. What are the risks involved? Indiscriminate exploitation of groundwater, salinity and arsenic issues, and lack of recharge, dwindling forest cover, soil erosion. Already, although, say, although we say, uh, during the recent uh, forest survey of India, they say it is 23%. The, actually, the cover has increased. But in fact, uh, the actual dense forest cover is less than 6%. The dense, very dense forest cover is less than 6%. That is the unfortunate thing. We have to, okay, we, we, want, we need development, but not at the cost of environment, environmental protection. If we, mean, uh, if we neglect the environment, then development will not be sustainable and we only will suffer and our future generations will also, also suffer. So dwindling forest cover is a great, I mean, a very serious concern and it leads to soil erosion and loss of uh, water security and food security and even livelihood security also. Similarly, indiscriminate exploitation of natural resources. Almost 21.3 million inter internally displaced persons, including those displaced by dams, mines and industrial development. Similarly, climate change and its impacts and preparedness. I think we have to remember that development comes with the cost. So what is the cost? Is it on the positive side or on the negative side? Uh, we have to actually I mean, develop the environmental economics. So what is the cost of development and what is the cost of, uh, what is the ecological price we are paying for that development? Is it sustainable and is it reasonable? Can we go with it or with the, without, that, without that? So it's a very important thing which we have to be uh, very, very mindful of. This is the uh, uh, composite water management index, which has been developed in Niti Aayog, the National, uh, National Institute for Transforming India. This is a national institution after the planning commission, uh, subsequent to planning, planning commission. They have indicated, uh, I mean, uh, identified nine sectors and uh, covering uh, 28 indicators, and in which uh, the, our the, the Telangana has fared uh, better than the previous year. And it's a constant evolution. So uh, Telangana is very, very dynamic state. We'll definitely keep up. And high and medium and low, uh, I mean, composite management index. I think our Telugu states, both of the states are uh, faring uh, fairly well. Uh, Andhra is shown to be, uh, I mean, uh, scoring high and Telangana is shown to be show, uh, scoring uh, medium. What is the st latest status? We do not know. The, the other, there are, these are, of course, uh, uh, figures in 2015, 16, around that time. So this is the depth of the depth to groundwater table. Uh, that is, uh, there are some dark spots uh, uh, and red spots uh, which are a cause of concern. We are uh, almost uh, using in our in, in our country almost 87 percent of the groundwater uh, resources are being extracted. So very very high percentage, uh, which will which will have adverse impact on our uh, on the sustainability of groundwater resources. 
I think we should be this Walampai, uh, this Walta Act has to be the Water Land, Water Land and Trees Act has to be strengthened. And, uh, I mean, um, it should be I mean implemented in its letter and spirit. That's very that's the need of the one. Similarly, water grid. Telangana is very, has done very good work in uh, completing the Mission Bhagiratha. I mean, Mission Bhagiratha uh, program or project uh, very effectively. And of course, there there may be some gaps here and there. But still, it's a very, very creditable achievement within a very short time, uh, which uh, has to be, I mean, uh, has to be implemented in other states also, like Andhra Pradesh, uh, like that. Telangana uh, state will have curtailed flows due to further allocations by state of duty, too. Uh, and inflows into Krishna River may be further delayed due to additional storage capacity of upper riparian states. Under the existing scheme of allocation, this is the greatest danger for us. Both our uh, both our Telugu states uh, are facing this danger of uh, upper riparian states. Uh, uh, I mean, storing more water uh, and not uh, releasing the water uh, due to um, uh, because unless they fill their reservoirs, they may not release the water. So this is the greatest danger we are in. We have to be we have to uh, stand on common uh, common platform and fight against these things. Though Telangana has about 20 major major and medium rivers. There is a gap between demand and supply to all sectors in certain years. So irrigation sector, what are the challenges in irrigation sector? One is the water use efficiency. Uh, and we are, unfortunately, we are, uh, we are a little bit uh, um, lagging behind uh, other uh, developed countries and even China also, where we have to, uh, due to this, we have to fo focus more on the water use efficiency um, uh, and also on the acre, acre per acre uh, efficiency, per acre uh, yield also. And uh, particularly on the water use efficiency. And success of China lies in improving agricultural resource administration. This is uh, their, their experience uh, with reference to on farm irrigation water management, monocropping and water intensive crops, even in arid regions. That is what uh, we, have, we are going to do. So, this, this is where we have to change our, our, change our uh, crop policy uh, to um, depending on the uh, type of soil and type of the region. So, that will give the uh, very optimum utilization of uh, water, available uh, scarce waters, and inadequate operation maintenance and funding for irrigation projects. This is the greatest danger for us. It's very difficult for uh, getting the uh, funds uh, for operation maintenance of whatever, uh, even, not only irrigation projects, even for water supply and sanitation projects also. Uh, it's a challenge for us. And that's why we have to go for uh, low operation maintenance uh, projects, etc., uh, and the climate resilient projects uh, like that. And minimum continuous environment flows also, we have to ensure that 10% and need for uh, transfer of knowledge and skills in integrated water resource management and uh, improving water uh, irrigation water use. That is no doubt improving the, uh, the uh, I mean, micro irrigation, et cetera, drip irrigation and sprinkler irrigation, et cetera. It's a very positive sign uh, throughout the Telugu states and also in India also. National priority to uh, shift to uh, Productivity based, that is, uh, I mean, water use efficiency based, uh, this thing. So, in agriculture, we are using almost 89% of groundwater and 15.2% there are, of course, economic things. I think, uh, in my personal view, we have to go for organic and natural or zero budget natural farming uh, on, a, on a big way, on a big way, of course, in a gradual manner only. Not, uh, we should not experience the uh, struggle the uh, Sri Lanka is facing now. We should have to go in a gradual manner only, but sure, for sure. So integrated water resources. So there's a lot of issues uh, um, uh, in these things and watershed management uh, and improved operation maintenance of water resources projects and climate change impacts. We have to necessarily consider the climate change impacts uh, in flood forecasting uh, and also in, uh, uh, in, in actually uh, the, in forecasting the floods, uh, forecasting the precipitation also, we need to have very, I uh, mean, uh, short range from short term and long term also, uh, and my, uh, at a micro level also, because we have got a, a very highly sophisticated satellite in a system also. Uh, we have got our own, uh, I mean, uh, GPS system with eight satellites also. We should be able to utilize those things uh, for um, reliable, yes, reliable uh, this thing for flood forecasting or precipitation forecasting rainfall forecasting, integrated water resources management, where we can use the satellite data also. This is where the, this is the wonder this uh, Singapore people have done. In 1977, Lee Kuan Yew, 
the prime minister of then prime minister of singapore has challenged the uh, engineers and planners whether you can uh, clean the singapore river in 10 years they have taken up the challenge and within 10 years they have cleaned the uh, this thing uh, singapore river into a pristine pure uh, river as uh, shown, as shown in the uh, bottom and they are producing uh, new water which is online uh, with uh, pure water or potable water and they are supplying to other industries and sometimes for uh, i mean uh, for, for uh, uh, even for processed water and for, and some and some people are uh, uh, using for uh, drinking water also so the operation maintenance plan not only for uh, water supply and sanitation etc but for irrigation projects also operation maintenance plan is is very very important most important because uh, it is uh, main uh, premise that uh, the nepal uh, this uh, flood the the floods in bihar also as a result of uh, the dam busting in nepal uh, was a result of uh, uh, inadequate operation maintenance or uh, untimely operation maintenance so this is the problem uh, we are facing this is the this is the most important thing uh, that, uh, not only construction of dams etc but uh, their operation maintenance is more important than construction uh, we should have an immediate action plan. We should have a medium-term action plan and a long-term action plan. Um, and global status of water and sanitation. Status of water and sanitation in India. We are still behind. Uh, we are still to okay, reach up or catch up with others. Mm -hmm. And uh, in Vijayawada Municipal Corporation, even in our uh, metro water, uh, Hyderabad metro water also, we have got the um uh, skeda system i have uh, actually gone to raghavapur where they are using skeda system for the water treatment plant it's a very good thing the telangana state has done and uh, both the states are good, doing good yes this is the water water safety plan which we have executed which which we have initiated in um, vijayawada municipal corporation but we could not complete it because of transfer etc and uh, this is the the intention is uh, not to wait till the water gets contaminated. Taking action before water gets contaminated and ensuring that it happens, really. That contaminant doesn't happen. So that is the idea. So we should have health-based targets and we have to assess the risk and we have to have uh, public health uh, status, uh, up-to-date status, and we have to uh, feed it. Uh, the, the risk management also we should do. So health-based targets will be there as per the government uh, main, uh, prescriptions, et cetera, those are regulatory standards. And we have to manage them. We have to assess the risk, manage the risk, and we have to main, uh, compare it with the public health status, et cetera. And we have to assess the risk again, again, and give it a feedback to the uh, health, uh, health targets. That is the, uh, this is a cyclic process. We have to know the catchment, and we have to start with the catchment and know the sources of water supply, uh, water qu quantity, and we have to control the um, in catchment. That means we have to take actions that protect the catchment and prevent any pollution of the catchment at the source itself. And then we have to protect our distribution system, not only distribution system, but our uh, production system, like our water treatment plants, etc. And the distribution system, and where we can supply safe drinking water. So there is a there, there, there is a scoring system also. So Vijayawada Municipal Corporation has initiated that, but of course uh, it is it is still in execution stage. Nagpur has done excellent work in, uh, uh, they have uh, done, uh, they have completed uh, water wastewater treatment plant and they are utilizing the effluent of that wastewater treatment plant for, for supplying water to the nearby thermal power station. They, in, the, in that way, they are uh, earning a lot of money in terms of close. So what can we do for sustainable development, environmental and financial, both we need both environmental sustainability and also financial sustainability and resilience. So that uh, the system will be resilient against natural disasters and they can come, uh, they can uh, regain their uh, original condition within a very short time. That is what it means, uh, resilience. So wastewater management and energy conservation and water conservation, resource conservation and frugal engineering, climate and disaster resilient design, sustainable urban drainage system, renewable energy uh, development and use and environment friendly technologies like our, uh, um, the uh, what's that? Uh, the constructed wetlands, etc., and arrest deforestation and, uh, and uh, ensure that plantation and uh, transplantation of trees whenever possible or wherever possible, and protecting the wildlife. These are our uh, bounden duties as engineers. And wastewater management, rainwater harvesting, groundwater recharging, rainwater recycling, non-revenue water reduction, 
and uh, leakage reduction, you know, whether it is in dams or whether it is in water supply and uh, sanitation, these things, and then energy conservation, water conservation, optimum use of natural resources, and recycling of building materials, etc., and any other resources. So there is an element of water and energy in every object and every um, in, uh, article we use, whether it is food or whether it is uh, uh, daily consumer uh, use. This is a sustainable urban drainage system, which we will be using the natural resources and natural topography and uh, the uh, natural topography and the natural soil uh, condition uh, for uh, absorbing the water through swales, etc., and through filters, natural filters, etc. So this is the circular economy for which we are aspiring of all of us. And this is the green infrastructure toolkit by Georgetown uh, regarding stormwater drainage. And uh, my dear friends, any questions, please? Yeah, I have, I have question. Thank you, sir. Hello. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Please, please come down. Please come up, sir. I may Hello. already. Yeah, sure. Can I talk? Uh, sure, sir. Sure, sir. Yeah, I'm GK Anand. The, I was looking for in the last 10 years what India government and the states, central government and states have done changes in the water management. Regarding water management, sir. Uh, uh, on the urban front, uh, they have come up uh, with uh, certain uh, policies and also certain programs uh, like our uh, Jaljeevan mission and also the uh, Amrut program and even smart cities also, uh, which have given a lot of uh, house service connections uh, uh, of water supply. Uh, no, that but is there the is the data uh, available. See, the Mr. Prime Minister keeps talking about that. Chandrasekhar Rao keeps talking about the water. So there has to be data available from the Indian government available that what are the, how many houses have been connected on tap water and the, yes, yes, yes. the data is available and the, on the, the government of India website. Is there and the, what are the, what are the new technologies which have come up to, for irrigation purposes where the less water can be used and the more benefits can be withdrawn. Yeah. <laughs> so regarding uh, actually it is a, it's something like an integrated uh, water management approach only they are following uh, in the Janjeevan mission also in, uh, as well as in Amrut mission also. Uh, they have suggested uh, using the latest technologies and also environment friendly technologies um, and also in uh, reviving the water bodies like our uh, tanks uh, uh, like that and also uh, tanks, lakes, etc. and in uh, protecting the water bodies. Uh, and in source improvement as well as source uh, uh, enhancement uh, augmentation and also ensuring that source is sustainable. So that is where they have uh, concentrated in their guidelines also. And in Telangana, I mean, um, Telangana is, uh, has also executed the uh, program uh, by, uh, in the name of uh, Mission Bhagiratha. And in the, at the national level, out of about 19, 19 crore uh, number of house service connections, they have, as per their website, we can see that they have already uh, mean, issued uh, about 11 crore connections as per their uh, website. It is available in their website. And uh, the, in, the, in their guidelines for the wastewater treatment plants, etc. also, they have suggested, in, uh, suggested low maintenance technologies and low energy consuming and easy to maintain technologies uh, like uh, constructed, constructed wetlands and uh, the, what is it, uh, the, um, the, um, the SBT technologies, that is KMS SBT, continuous aerobic multi-stage uh, uh, soil biotechnology, like that. Uh, and also uh, the technology which is uh, developed by NIRI, uh, like that, uh, they, have, they have actually uh, done good work. But of course, as you said, uh, a lot of work is, needs to be done because uh, we have not done that much good in Ganga action plan. It's not considered a good, very good uh, main success. But a lot of gaps are there, which we need to fill up, no doubt about it. We will fill up as a, uh, in course of time. I am sure we are engineers together. We can uh, definitely do our bit to uh, mean, uh, improve things. Thank you. I do agree that you have given a lot of data, a lot of uh, information with regard to the water resources, water availability, and then the usage and the various countries which are doing what exactly. But I was looking for basically for Indian government 
what are the new initiatives which have been taken up to improve this water management system in the country? Particularly in, the, in respect of uh, irrigation water management, they have come out with a uh, dam safety act, which is a very, very uh, highly uh, I mean, necessary act. Though there, is, there are some um, contentious uh, points regarding uh, the, um, the, the, the boundaries, that is state boundary, central boundary, but they, they can be sorted out uh, in course of time, I think. That's not a, that may not be a problem. But it's a very good initiative by government of India because it's a great, uh, I mean, risk we are facing uh, re regarding dam safety in our country. We can see your representations on the, in the YouTube or something? Yeah, you can, sir. Okay. Anand, sir. Yeah, it is put on YouTube also by our IEI. Okay. 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 Yeah, you can go to IEI and uh, click it. You'll get. I will pass this link also. So I think Professor Ramana Naik want to say something, please. Sir, good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Good Highly appreciated presentation and uh, our Gulshar Anand Sahib uh, asked very good points. Uh, sir, uh, the father of Indian irrigation, we call, used to call Dr. Kail Ragaru and Sarathar Cotton, is highly appreciable. You partly mentioned about the dam safety, particularly regarding the 600 projects in India. I think uh, our eminent engineer, Kaginar Sahib, also dam safety member in government of Singhana is on the line. Uh, number one, sir. Uh, I think uh, recently, every year we used to saw our Nagarjuna project, Nagarjuna Sahara project, right side, they used to going on uh, repair the wiggy wears and all these things. The One of the most, uh, I think, second highest project in the world uh, after Bakra Rangar, Nagarjuna Sahara project. And uh, moreover, sir, number two, uh, dam safety, government, not only government of India, government of uh, uh, all state governments also, they have to take a lot of care. Yes, sir. And in a uh, uh, what uh, Sardar Katanji, Dr. Kailra proposed, uh, Ganga Kaveri, because all inter... Uh, Our um, uh, Arthur Kart, sir, Arthur Kart sir, has proposed 120 years yeah. ago. Then uh, yeah. I mean, it was reiterated by Dr. Kail Rao, then by the student company, yeah. and then yeah. by um, I mean, subsequently uh, other... Um... Yes, it but is 2021. Take it start from top to bottom. They are going reverse to bottom to top. Three, three, zero. Zero. In the, uh, it is a current bill or a repair bill? Yes, repair bill. I think uh, Kagendra the also. Sir? left, uh, I mean, left just recent, uh, okay. and I, a few minutes ago, sir. Now he's not there in the meter. Sir, I too have to leave because I have to go for, uh, I mean, leave for uh, some... Uh, sir, place, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, sir. <laughs> Sorry. Sir, is it possible to uh, link in the reverse of Ganga to Kaveri, sir, in these days uh, as in present uh, circumstances? Ken Betwa in, project has oh. already been, uh, already yeah, nearing completion, sir. From Uttar yeah. Pradesh to Madhya Pradesh, there is a Ken Betwa yeah, project there, a link. Uh, Not only Ganga, sir, I'm talking about construction at Kinder. an advanced stage. So, it is yeah, possible, yeah, but I think uh, as we have discussed, uh, the environmental issues have to be considered and the livelihood issues have to be considered and the colossal energy requirements, uh, which have to um, also have to be considered. Unless people are involved and a lot of debate takes place around each and every project yeah. proposal, uh, things will not move forward and uh, we'll lose floors of lakhs of crores of rupees because a project half completed is as good as not, no, 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 nil. So that is a very, very important uh, main issue as you have raised. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you, sir. If no questions, then uh, we'll proceed. Uh, thank question. you very much. And uh, for uh, the wonderful, uh, has done. wonderful lecture. Uh, and, uh, hello, sir. One, one, one simple thing. Once, can I ask one small question? Is there time? Yeah, please, please go ahead. Time is uh, always there, sir. No, no, he's in a hurry. I don't want yes, to. Yes, sir. I, I have no, to no, leave no, one we... That's why. Uh, please, please come. So leave sir. it. We'll discuss please. later. Please. No, no, one sir. thing. Sir. Sir, I mean, I mean, I just tell you, I'll ask. No, no. Kondal Nagaru, are we in a city like Hyderabad? Yes. Are we able to audit the amount of water that is being brought in from various sources and the water that is actually being used? Yes, sir. That is uh, they, they have audited, sir. Actually, yes. it, it comes to about uh, thirty-five percent or so losses are there. Another non-revenue water losses, sir. But uh, but it was conducted about uh, almost uh, maybe about uh, about a decade ago, I think. Yeah, that's what I'm, but a lot of additional but not, uh, water recently, is now, 
not of late. That, that is, is possible. Important thing. It is possible. We can we can audit. There are uh, agencies. Technology is available. Uh, skill manpower is available. Equipment is available. We can audit. In okay. reverse, sir, there is a hybrid okay. budget plus na the central or commission. Okay. Thank you. Right, Andy Brahmar Digar. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Engineer Kondal Ragaru. For an excellent and uh, really, you have given uh, multi dimensions of entire water and uh, other things, sanitation, and you touched all the almost all the point A to Z. Uh, nothing is left uh, in water, uh, the sustainable water management issues and challenges. Can I use your with the permission of eminent engineers? Can I leave, sir? Okay, great. Right. Yeah. I'm very okay. sorry. I don't know. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, we are going to complete, sir. Uh, just we are going to. Or two minutes on okay. this. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Wait, wait for it. You have waited. I am not going to give any lecture on this. I just want to thank you for uh, the what uh, uh, excellent lecture. Now I request our uh, engineer, Supriti Garu, uh, committee member, to thank kindly you. propose what of thanks. Thank, thank you, sir. Sir, sir go over to Supriti, sir. Thank you, Chairman Garu. Okay. I feel it's my proud privilege. to propose vote of thanks for the august gathering thank you thank you antaru malli akade kuchu tari public health and municipal engineering department government of telangana engineer b brahma reddy garu fi chairman ia tsc and engineer b prashant today's convener and today's event professor ramana naik banotu dr ayesh and raj garu engineer b ram reddy garu Engineer Ramesh Kumar and other committee members of Telangana State Council, and lady engineer, engineer D Rama, and engineer Narmada for attending all the events. Very thorough, without any fail. Actually, Narmada. and the past president council member of minister of minerals past chairman past honorary secretary members of telangana final ip minister of minerals india corporate members of i a distinguished guests representatives of media ladies and gentlemen on behalf of the telangana state center of institute of engineering and my own behalf i convey our sincere and proper profound thanks to engineer sri kondal rao gar mie chief engineer in charge public health and municipal engineering department government of telangana and he is my good friend and also he is a colleague of alumni JNTU Kakinada addressed the gathering as a chief guest. I also thank the dignitaries, past presidents of IEA, past chairman of IEA, past president, past secretaries of IEA, council members, committee members, corporate members, and others who made it convenient to attend this event. i also thank the representatives of media thanks one and all all are requested to write a national anthem thank you जन गण मन अधिनायक जय हे भारत भाग्य विधाता
पंजाब सिंध गुजरात मराठा द्राविड उत्कल बंगा विंध्य हिमाचल यमुना गंगा उच्चल जलधि तरंगा तव शुभ नामे जागे तव शुभ आशीष मागे गाहे तव जय गाथा जन गण मंगल दायक जय हे भारत भाग्य विधाता जय हे जय हे जय हे जय 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 हे जय हिंद लेट जॉनर विना नर्मदा